Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga, so long as it's that one particular anime and or manga, because we are back with more Hunter Hunter and much more specifically to continue the Encyclopedia. where today it is time to focus on one of the most deceptively simple yet terrifying Nen wielders in this entire series, Hisoka Moro. Because yes, that's right, Hisoka does indeed have a last name, which is Moro, very strange and plain. It's kind of like giving the Joker a last name and having it be Smith. But Hisoka is an iconic pillar of non and related Hunter Hunter, and as such, he's also one of the most pronounced Nen users of the series. In fact, I think you'd be quite hard pressed to find a Nen ability that is more well known than Hisoka's bungee gum, which as the meme states, contains the properties of both rubber and gum. A fact that I just so happen to get reminded of in every single video I make, but that's all right because jokes are eternal and they never get old. And you know what else never gets old? Me telling you to subscribe to the New World Review, which will result in regular Hunt Hunt content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed because it contains the properties of both pressing the fun button and and joining our very own Hunter Association. And please do comment down below if you are a new member and Hisoka welcomes you warmly. So before we get into bungees and gums though, Hisoka is a notable figure for possessing what I would call the perfect set of prerequisites for aura control. He comes equipped with superhuman levels of strength, speed and endurance, which are on par, if not even greater than that of painstakingly trained assassins such as Ilmi Zoldic. In addition to that, he is also a generalist master when it comes to both hand-to-hand -hand combat and even wielding weaponry. The second of which doesn't occur all that often often, but when it does, Hisoka demonstrates an almost surgical level of precision, favoring blades in particular. But where Hisoka becomes truly devastating is his genius level intellect. It's sometimes very difficult to reconcile the intelligence of this man, primarily because he tends to act solely for very primal desires. But Hisoka is capable of outthinking all but the highest level strategists of this world. And what's more impressive is that he can do this in a purely improvised manner. So as a result, Hisoka fits very nicely into the mental tier of characters such as Krollo, Jing, and Pariston, all of whom are identified by their intellect rather than raw output. And I go to the trouble of laying all of this groundworky stuff because Hisoka is a natural transmuter, one of the more cerebral branches of Nen use, which allows wielders to change the properties of their aura to mimic real world substances, or in most cases, even augment or create their own new substance. It's not a particularly well balanced Nen category. And when it comes to transmuters, you will either see a masterclass of Nen use or a complete and utter failure. There is no in between. And obviously Hisoka falls more on the masterclass side of things. And with that, we should probably get into the first of his two count him two Hatsu being the infamous bungee gum. This ability is probably one of the most underwhelming in all of Hunter Hunter when you first hear it explained, because basically it allows Hisoka to transmute his aura into a sticky and elastic substance. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, yes, the aura is impossibly sticky and nigh on impenetrable, but there's no, you know, summoning giant deities, no complex mathematics, and no string of absurd conditions or restrictions used to create overwhelming power. In fact, it's kind of ironically mind boggling considering just how simple bungee gum is, especially for someone at Hisoka's level because having no restrictions or conditions is a massive advantage. But then again, I suppose that's not necessarily true because the restriction is that bungee gum is honestly nothing all that special. It doesn't have a very high aura cost. It doesn't do anything stupidly overpowered. And really the only reason why it's a threat in any way, shape or form is because it's in the hands of one of the greatest geniuses that Hunter Hunter has ever known. Bungee gum is not an ability that can stand on its own and it serves primarily to augment Hisoka because at his core, he is a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. So an example of how he may commonly use bungee gum would be to attach elastic strand to the roof of an enclosed space. And should he need to swiftly dodge an attack, he will allow the elasticity to pull him out of harm's way. Or as an offensive measure, he can pretty much do the exact same thing to an opponent, attach a strand of aura to them and forcibly pull the opponent towards him, usually resulting in much pain and in many cases, even death for an enemy. Also in many ways, bungee gum can also act as something of an ultimate shield as it has been shown tanking both Goto's deadly coins, but more more importantly, a dodgeball infused with Gon's rock attack. Although once again, bungee gum only works in these cases because of Hisoka's superhuman abilities, as he is able to physically withstand the force being flung at him. And even then, in the case of the dodgeball, it broke two of Hisoka's fingers to achieve. And speaking of fingers, individual strands of bungee gum can be generated from each of Hisoka's fingers, as well as his hands generally and feet. However, this does not determine the maximum amount of strands he is able to produce. Hisoka's true limit is unknown, but during the Heaven's Arena arc, it was stated that at one time he produced 15 different strands of bungee gum in his match against Castro, most of which were generated from a single hand. And it really is truly hard to describe just how versatile this aura is in combination with everything Hisoka brings to the table that is not related to Nen. Watching Hisoka use bungee gum is like viewing a grand master of chess thinking 10 moves ahead, laying down various traps and sinisterly luring opponents straight to their doom. And it's particularly painful for an opponent to deal with because Hisoka also shrouds his aura using Ean, meaning that it would require consistent use of Gyo to actually see what 
kind of gum related traps Hisoka is laying down, but that in turn leaves the rest of an opponent's body very vulnerable, thus providing Hisoka with endless opportunities to strike. And this is probably a good time to bring up that rather frustratingly for the world at large, Hisoka is more or less a master of the basic and advanced applications of Nen as well. We just flagged Nen there, but Hisoka is probably most well known for possessing one of the most sinister invocations of Ren that we've seen in the series. Although not the most sinister, however, it is still well and truly capable of producing the bloodlust phenomena. And another commonly wielded principle is that of Shu, which Hisoka uses to enhance his playing cards to the point where they become deadly, deadly weapons. In fact, with that in mind, Shu is Hisoka's main win condition to damage or kill opponents, usually kill, but in many ways, it's actually much more important than bungee gum. And again, this goes to show that bungee gum in and of itself is nothing but a supplementary Hansu designed to give Hisoka endless and well-planned opportunities to strike opponents with his other skill sets. But it would also be a mistake to view bungee gum as Hisoka's main method of achieving these advantages because he does have another often forgotten about Hansu known as texture surprise. And with this, Hisoka is able to apply his aura to any kind of smooth surface and transmute it to replicate the properties of, well, effectively any substance he wants. The most basic example of this would be replicating his own skin during his match with Castro, thus giving the impression that his dismembered arm had been instantly healed. However, allegedly, Hisoka can transmute his aura into more than a thousand different substances, including skin, metals, fabrics, and minerals. And I suppose one of the more absurd invocations of this was during the York New City arc, where Hisoka used texture surprise to replicate both the paper and the ink, which Crawler used to tell the fortunes of the Phantom Troop with his stolen lovely ghostwriter ability. And not only that, but he did it instantaneously and was able to produce an entirely different fortune, so texture surprise is not at all to be underestimated. With a strategist like Hisoka, this ability is every bit as useful as bungee gum. In fact, it may be even more versatile, and that's nowhere near the full extent of its madness. And that's because in the manga, Hisoka has reached a whole new level of power by engaging in the wonderful realm of post-mortem Nen. During his battle with Krolo in Heaven's Arena, Hisoka for the first time in the series proved to be outmatched by the planning capacities of the Phantom Troop leader. Which I suppose does bring up Hisoka's one and arguably only weakness in the realm of Nen, being that he is so confident in his ability to improvise that he will gladly meet any opponent directly on their terms, which was a very, very bad idea in this case, as Krolo thoroughly planned to deal with Bungie Gum by collecting a maddening five Nen abilities, which when used in various combinations in this particular location, provided a hard counter to anything that Hisoka was capable of generating. And as a result, Hisoka was indeed killed in Heaven's Arena, but not before he did something particularly interesting. As the brilliant strategist he is, Hisoka saw his inevitable death well in advance, and with no other choice available, he elected to test the theory of post-mortem Nen, which if you're not familiar with the concept, is an invocation of Nen that occurs after the death of the user, usually in response to some sort of profound desire or emotion. And oftentimes post-mortem Nen can linger in the world as something of a permanent effect. Not so much this time though, because Hisoka essentially issued a command via bungee gum where he said the following. Nen gum, I beseech you, spring to life after my death, pump my heart, my lungs, stoke me all over to revive me. And because Hisoka's death would ultimately be caused by suffocation due to being swarmed by about 200 puppet people amongst a giant explosion, this put Hisoka's body in a position where bungee gum was indeed able to act on its master's last desires, springing Hisoka back to life, but that's not quite all. Because due to engaging in post-mortem Nen, Hisoka's basic abilities also became much more powerful along with his revival. For example, he was now able to use bungee gum to create prosthetic limbs. Very, very useful indeed, since he had lost both an arm and a foot in the fight against Krollo. Not just that though, the gum was also capable of filling in for the flesh he'd lost in the explosion, and covered with a delicious layer of texture surprise, Hisoka all of a sudden looked good as new. And furthermore, Hisoka also demonstrated a much more advanced use of bungee gum using a mission, where he was able to successfully trap and restrain Machi. And while Hisoka was competent in a mission previously, being able to separate parts of his aura here and maintain its extraordinary strength is once again a whole new level of insanity when it comes to this man. And quite honestly, we still have yet to see the full extent of his post-mortem abilities. With all of this in mind though, one thing that's not particularly clear is how bungee gum and texture surprise were developed. This is because Hisoka is a character quite deliberately shrouded in much, much mystery. And yes, I know there is that one shot chapter by Suishida, which attempts to give us Hisoka's backstory. But as always, I need to mention that that is not currently canon. And as of right now, all we know for a potential fact, because Hisoka could just be lying, I guess, is that his abilities were likely inspired by two candies that he enjoyed as a child, which are implied to have been named bungee gum and texture surprise, which I suppose does very much play into Hisoka's more primal nature. He is a man who seeks what he believes to be the most basic pleasures of life, much akin to a child's eternal focus on attaining delicious candies. But whatever the case, Hisoka is a true rarity of the Nen world. Physically and mentally, he is an ideal vessel for the art form, pushing it to degrees that the more basic Ori users could only ever half-heartedly dream of. But at the same time, Hisoka is quite 
quite modest with his Nen usage, electing not to invest his aura in grand world shaking abilities, meaning that he is not overly reliant on Nen use to serve his purposes, which is a trait that is demonstrated by many of the greatest transmuters in the series. And once again, it just makes Hisoka such a pain to deal with, because even if you do somehow figure out his abilities before landing into a bungee gum trap, it doesn't really help you all that much because you still need to deal with a terrifying superhuman murderer with an infinite arsenal of ideas at his disposal, mostly made possible by the simplest of transmutations. Because without Hisoka, Bungie Gum and Texture Surprise are nothing. But in combination with Hisoka, they are two of the most deadly and deceptively simple Hansu ever generated in this world. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you're keen for some more Hunt Hunter content, then please do go and check out some of my other videos or even subscribe to the channel for regular Hunter Hunter glory delivered straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the New World Review and I'll see you next time.